Hello and welcome everyone. This is Rosetta Wolf, the Violet Wolf Witch, and I am super excited. Today is March 20th, 2023, and that means that at least for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, that it is the true new year. It is Spring Equinox, or Ostara. Tomorrow, March 21st, is a new moon, and March is Aries season, which is the astrological reset um, for all horoscope signs and the true new year. So let's get into it. <laughs> uh, there are plenty of rituals that you could do, and don't worry if you aren't celebrating today or if you see this video later on. You can celebrate for the rest of March or even the beginning of April to welcome in the new season. There's lots of ritual work that you can do. Uh, this is a time of fertility. Uh, working on new projects, acknowledging new growth, and getting rid of everything that is still lingering that we are no longer in need for um, from the last season, the winter months. As a Leo, I am ecstatic to welcome back the sun. I'm ready to just dance outside, sunbathe, have a garden, <laughs> you know, see life everywhere. I am so over winter. I think anywhere in the Midwest that ice is over or has degrees with a negative sign in front of it, we should have some sort of allowance for winter time. Um, for those of us with seasonal depression, I, I really think that it should be making more be taken more seriously. I know that there's certain things that you can do, uh, but I just, I myself hate the winter months. I can appreciate the beauty outside. I can appreciate the coziness. Um, you should not be forced to work when there's a blizzard outside and so many places, even after the pandemic, still expect you to trudge outside when there is ice everywhere, hazards everywhere, freezing temperatures. I mean, I'm excited spring is here, okay? And even more excited for the summer months. That being said, <laughs> um, there are so many rituals that you can do to welcome in the energy of the new year. And it is really a wonderful time, especially with the triple three power of the new moon, uh, the new year, and Aries season itself um, to manifest and push your desires for things that you've been working on for a long time to come to fruition during harvest time, the summer and um, later in the fall. So today, I myself decided that I was going to start working on some yard projects, even though it's sort of chilly where I am. I am going to plant some dahlias and some lilies. I hope you can get some inspiration from this. I'm going to do a darker garden this year. Um, I'm going to go with, you know, darker colors, reds, plum colors, and, well, as dark as... They were able to manipulate it now. It's pretty cool. And I don't know that you can see it, but they're already beginning to sprout in the bag. I think that that's awesome. I, I can't wait. Um, I want to try a little butterfly garden. I, like so many others, am stuck in apartment life, but I'm still going to make the most of my outdoor area and try to nourish any nature that is around. There's lots of rabbits where I live. Um, I don't see them as a pest. I don't have any vegetables or anything right now, so I'm going to plant what I can to attract them, to feed them, as well as um, any milkweed that I can find to nourish our butterfly friends um, and honeybees. So if you have any advice for uh, balcony apartment life, um, gardening. I'd appreciate it. You can leave them down in the comments below. I'll be sure to read them and reply to everything that I can. I'm also going to be sprinkling um, some cinnamon on my doorstep and my outdoor balcony area, and that is for abundance. So take some inspiration from that. I will also be washing down my floors with a mixture of uh, boiled basil water with fresh basil and some Florida water. And I'm going to wash down my front door with that as well um, to release any stagnant energy that's left over from winter and bring in some prosperity. I was also reflecting on it um, early this morning. You know how we have a tendency late at night or early in the morning 
our mind just goes to darker places and reflects on moments that we've experienced embarrassment or typically it goes to bad memories, right? And I know that uh, in the law of assumption community that you are not supposed to relive those events because you're just reinforcing it, right? I don't subscribe to that level of um, delusion, like ignoring any trauma or abuse that you've experienced. I do think that it shapes you as a person, um, hopefully for the better, for a lot of people, I think, for the better. Um, not that it is necessary or anything of that sort, but in my experience, I think that I've learned from and grown from a lot of negative things that have happened to me. And I guess it was rooted in, in conversation that I had with a friend yesterday about uh, childhood traumas that we had experienced. And I'll keep this like as clean and subtle as possible for YouTube standards, I, I hope. But um, early this morning, I was just thinking back on how how much I missed out on as a kid because I grew up in a very dysfunctional, to say the least, family. Um, hopefully I'll make a video that goes more in depth so then other people who've experienced similar situations can share their stories and uh, see how we've grown from it. And I had been wishing that, you know, that an adult like a teacher or somebody responsible would have noticed that the way that I acted out as a kid was really the result of a lot of childhood wounds and trauma and really bad things that were going on at home. But I always seemed to be just punished uh, for acting out. So that was just, you know, constant reinforcement of being treated poorly by all the adults around me that should have protected me. And I was just thinking, oh, I wish that somebody would have just protected me. And I feel like I personally believe that my soul has been here many times before. And I think a lot of us have been here many times before. And I used to have thoughts of, you know, self-harm or running away. But I would never do either because I always had the... I'd like to think it's my higher self telling me that I couldn't do those things because it was sort of just like, you know, life is a simulation, it's like a video game, and I would end up right back where I started, you know, sort of like you lose a life and then you end up right back where you started and you still have to go through that obstacle, that difficult situation, experience those people that hurt you to learn some sort of life lesson and while I've not completely figured it out yet as to why I had to experience some of those people and some of those things, I believe that I, an outer part of myself, my higher self who I'm getting closer and closer to becoming one with as I grow older and as I evolve, as we all evolve, I think that we all sort of have a similar experience of we were there protecting ourselves, you know, even though we experienced the bad, it could have been much worse. And it was almost like a meditation that I fell into that I was able to go back and talk to my younger self and tell her everything was going to be okay and tell her about the life that I have now, the life that we have now, her and I, as, you know, one person who has evolved, one spirit that has evolved and grown together and despite all these obstacles and all these cruel events and people and even though that life is still you know not as good as we want it to be that we overcame so much together and really grew and a younger version of me would be so shocked and so proud of the person that I am today and I really hope that all of you could go back and do a similar sort of meditation. I know that we all carry our own crosses to bear, our own wounds, our own traumas, and I know that we all wish that and we all might have somebody that should have protected us and they might even been the one that hurt us. But I want you to go back and whether it's through a picture or in the mirror or 
through visualization, excuse me, um, go back and talk to your younger self. It can be a child version of you. It could be you throughout the years, teenage version. It could have been you a year ago. And see how far that you've come. Heal yourself. Heal your inner child through doing this. Because no matter where you are now, even if you aren't where you want to be, you've definitely evolved, you've definitely grown, and a younger version of you would be so proud of you, of what you've overcome, and where you are now. Even if it's just you still being here, that is a huge accomplishment. It is a difficult 3D reality that we as spiritual beings are experiencing in human form. It's been a really rough couple of years. <laughs> we should all be very proud of where we are now, regardless of where, if we want to be as far as we would like to be, you should be damn proud of how far that you've gotten. And again, even if you're still here, that is a huge accomplishment. I, I know some of us might not have expected to have made it this far. You should be glad. I really encourage you to take this moment to reflect on how far you've come during your whole life, but especially these past couple of years. Be proud of yourself. Know that you protected yourself no matter what happened to you. You've always been there for yourself. Your higher self has always been there for yourself. I really believe that our higher selves are our own form of guardian angel, even though we may have other spirit guides watching over us and helping us. I think we are our own saviors. We are our own guardian angels. And I think that this is a great way to start the new season is by, even if it takes multiple sessions, healing old childhood wounds by talking to our past selves who we are still one with because everything is happening all at once, right? Time is not as linear as we think it is. I just thought that that would be a great exercise to use as I felt a lot better after I had revisited my old self and let her know, let myself know, how great it is, how far we've come together, and how much we've accomplished. And I know that we're not done yet. It's a new season. It is a wonderful time to start new projects, new manifestations, and it's all going to come to fruition with the help of our higher selves, our present self, and even our past selves. That's another triple, right? <laughs> we are our own holy trinity. So take this time of fertility and this new year. I feel the shift myself. I hope that you do if you are experiencing, you know, the start of spring. Let me know if this message resonated with you. I'll be sure to read all the comments and reply to as many as I can. If you're not already, please subscribe to my channel for more spiritual content. And you can find me on Instagram at the Violet Wolf Witch and on TikTok as Rosetta Wolf. I hope that this new season nourishes your soul. Let me know if you have any ideas or any rituals that you are doing for Ostero. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.